Hey everybody, me and my former missionary companion, uh, we welcome you to today's video from the world headquarters of Preston Flat, from the catacombs, from the bowels of Preston Flat, if you will. Uh, I think you'll like today's video. Today I want to tell you about my experience visiting uh, this place called St. Mary's in Provo, Utah. It's uh, the Epis church the Episcopal Church uh, but anyhow I used to go there like maybe 10 to 15 years ago and uh, it was a pretty positive experience so I thought I'd tell you what it's like there um, the main characteristics of St. Mary's if I had to uh, summarize it is it's kind of like the Catholics but it's um, it's kind of more open to pretty much anybody under the sun. When you're in St. Mary's and you look out across the congregation, man, you're going to see about every colored hair uh, in the world and uh, every kind of outfit, every kind of costume. I mean, there are guys wearing dresses. There are uh, young ladies wearing uh, cowboy outfits. and <laughs> It's uh, a lot of free expression in that place. And... It reminds me of uh, the way it used to be uh, when um, when the scribes and Pharisees criticized Jesus. They said, man, how come you're sitting around sipping back the sauce with the uh, publicans and sinners? What's your problem, Jesus? Why are you doing that? And Jesus said, man, it's uh, not the healthy. I don't come to... Whatever he said, anyway. <laughs> the healthy don't need a physician, you know? It's only the sick that do. So anyhow, what was the end result of that? The end result was that the real people were the ones that got to hang out with Jesus, not these uh, self-righteous, sanctimonious people that thought they were so high and mighty and clean and everything. So that's the way it is at St. Mary's. It's an old... Uh, it's a really cool, old, um, beautiful brick building with a high roof and um, brick and stone. It has these really cool, uh, beautiful uh, stained glass windows. The main challenge is that the building was built so many gazillion years ago that I'm sure it was big enough for the demands at the time. But at least as of 10 or 15 years ago, Man, we were sitting in there like sardines, literally shoulder to shoulder, sitting there with people. So the positive thing about going to St. Mary's is, um, you know, you can theorize about different people, different groups. You can watch news broadcasts and think, dang, that person seems kind of weird. And that same person is watching their news broadcast and thinking about someone like you and thinking that you seem pretty weird too. <laughs> but when you sit that close to people, you actually get to know them and you realize that they are people too. And you can appreciate them as human beings, perhaps even as Jesus did. And indeed, St. Mary's uh, is one of the churches that at the Food and Care Coalition they're the ones that are slinging the hash. They're the ones that are serving up the food to the, um, you know, to whoever needs food, or you know, they're just really into the service type of thing. Uh, it is very progressive, so even more progressive than the Catholics. So if you're not into the uh, progressive type of viewpoints, for all, by all means, you can still go and enjoy it. But uh, I suggest you don't bring up politics at all. <laughs> Because you may just assume that at a church that people are going to uh, perhaps be more um, old-fashioned as to one value or another, but actually it's uh, generally uh, not too conservative at that place. And um, let's see, the viewpoints, The at least the priest back then, he uh, I don't know if he was a maverick or, uh, or what, <laughs> But sometimes he would say things that I didn't quite believe in. For example, uh, there's that miracle where it's called the miracle of the loaves and the fishes, where Jesus and a bunch of people, they're all out in the boonies, but they didn't have enough food to feed people. 
But Jesus said, man, just have them sit down in these groups anyway. Bring together whatever bread we have, whatever fish. We're just going to bless it. And then the story is that it was a miracle that the loaves and the fishes multiplied till it was so much that they could share it and they could cart it down in baskets and share it with all the people. But the one, uh, the one uh, week that I went and they talked about the preach, preacher guy, the priest, he talked about that. Uh, I was kind of disappointed because he said uh, the actual miracle in his mind was that they really did have just very few loaves and fishes. Uh, but the people were sat down in groups. They know that they knew that Jesus was expecting to feed them with just so few. And that the real miracle is that even at the end of the prayer, uh, they had what they had, but that the people themselves had actually brought food from home. That, but they were greedy. They were going to hoard it. You know, they had it tucked into their, into their outfits and stuff. The real miracle is that when they saw Jesus do that, then they decided to share. So they shared what they had actually brought from home, and everybody was fed, and then they collected the surplus baskets at the end. <laughs> And I thought, you know, I guess that is possible. Maybe it is a kind of a miracle that people's hearts are touched and then they decide to share and stuff. But then I got to thinking, man, where are you going to draw the line? Like, did Jesus really walk on water then? Or was there just wa uh, rocks under the water? You know, did he really calm the sea? Did he really restore eyesight to the blind? Or... Or what, you know? What about the person with a withered hand? What about the people that were risen from the dead? You know, so I just thought it's a really slippery slope, man. You've got to be really careful when you start dismissing the, the miracles of Jesus, if you're even claiming to be like a reasonably Christian group. But the people are nice. Um, yeah, it, it is super progressive, and uh, it's kind of trippy. It's neat to meet people and to... Uh, to know what people are actually like and I mean they're people that I mean they were looking at me too you know it's not like I was sitting there looking at all these people that formerly I thought they were weirdos and then I started accepting them because they're sitting there too they're looking to their right and left and they see me sitting there and they think that guy looks a little sketchy but I'm going to try to give him the benefit of the doubt and and uh, be decent to him and all of this so <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. So that's one thing. Um, they did talk politics a few times, and they came to conclusions. They talked politics a time or two from the podium in ways that I know it didn't match everybody's viewpoints, and that was very unfortunate. Um, but I will say they are... They, uh, they open their church to the community. In fact, the person that was the organist back then for their church was a BYU music uh, major type of person. They had actually hired her to be the church organist, you know? So they, they don't really draw the lines like, yeah, you're a Mormon, you can't come in, or you're this and you can't come in. Man, they are just super generous with opening it to everyone. And I say congratulations to them because that does really seem like a Christian thing. I mean, where do you draw the line as far as who can come into your church? How stingy are you with your, with what passes as acceptable Christianity? You know? and, and so not just the organists, but they would let the uh, local BYU choirs and the uh, little orchestras and stuff, they would let them use their chapel because of the unique acoustics and the... They would let them use that to uh, put on special programs, even during the church services. They had people from BYU choirs and stuff that came in and they sang for church. That's something that you don't expect to see, but uh, it really wasn't uh, a strong us versus them mentality at St. Mary's. Now, I don't know what happened since then. I don't know if uh, they kept jamming people into that little chapel, the chapel, which I don't know if I told you or not, but... It has these beautiful stained glass windows all along the sides. It's just really pretty. 
because they did have like a big old cultural hall in the back that provided more room for people. And I've heard something about that in the past they would uh, team up with the uh, community church just kind of across the way. And, you know, maybe, maybe they all uh, split the facilities up in some way uh, to, to allow for bigger crowds. But I just know 10 to 15 years ago it was super crowded. <laughs> And um, I don't remember if I told you in this video, but in the other one I was saying that uh, one day I was there and they had a couple of uh, Mormons there, that, that not Mormon missionaries, but older Mormons in business suits. They looked like they worked for the church, actually. And they announced themselves as being LDS and they had uh, little pads of paper and pens. And they were actually uh, sitting in the back. You know, they were welcomed. Uh, and everybody knew what they were doing, but they were actually looking around and making notes on how things uh, how things were going with the Episcopal Church, because I suspect it's because of the great variety of attendees. You know, like in this modern world with so many different styles and people identifying in so many different ways. How do you include them all and still have a Christian church? So they were sitting there. Uh, my understanding was that they were assigned to observe and to write down ideas on what they could learn from that to maybe help the Mormons, you know. So that was pretty interesting to me also. Um, that's pretty much it, but that St. Mary's is pretty cool. I, sometimes I'll go and hang out with the Catholics uh, in town they got a pretty cool group but um those of you that are perhaps even more progressive than the catholics would be you may want to look into saint mary's you know it's it's pretty interesting um and so that's my uh experience at saint mary's and i haven't been there for years i do want to say that they have uh they also have female priests and pastors and stuff, whatever they want to call them. And that some of the most spiritual talks I ever heard in that place was from a lady preacher. So uh, that's pretty interesting. You know, that's something that you don't see every day in, in uh, a bunch of Christian churches. Would you be so good as to like and subscribe? And um, I really appreciate it. And I've had zero people um, become monthly donors to support my channel so far. But if any of you want to do it, and if you, what I'll do is I'll talk you up. I'll give you a special recognition uh, as soon as I realize that you've done that. And then I'll, uh, I know you're not, you wouldn't do it for the fame, but if you want, I'd, I will uh, give you some appreciation on the, one of these next videos for helping us out. I really appreciate you. Thank you.